Happy New Year, D2 sports fans. Thanks for making us a part of your 2022 plans. And we are excited to have a big lineup plan for you for this new year. I'm your host, Wayne Cavani, and joining me once again is the hardest working co-host in D2 sports, Bethany Bowman. Before I turn it over to you, Bethany, uh, it's shameless plug time. Now that we have entered the new year, my Power 10 rankings will be uh, up on NCAA.com every week beginning January 11th. The men's will be on Tuesdays and the women's will be every Wednesday. Isn't that exciting, Bethany? Yep, everybody be sure and go check those out. Wayne's top 10 rankings. And of course, rankings are always fun. And speaking of those Power 10, there have been quite a few surprises finding their way into the top 10 this season. One of those is 14-0 Minnesota Duluth. Joining us today is the head coach and mastermind behind the Bulldogs hot start head coach, Justin Wick. Coach, welcome to the nation. Yeah, thank you for having me. This is awesome. Yeah, it, it's it's great. It's like we said, you know, anytime there's a top 10 with unexpected teams in there, it, it's always more fun, especially for the person writing the article and making the rankings. Um, let's talk a little bit about your journey. You came in, um, they were a 12 win team the year before and almost overnight, you, you found success. Um, gradual improvements in the first year, that huge second year. Now you're 14 and 0. Is this where you expected to be so quickly? And what do you think has been behind this huge jump to one of the last remaining undefeated teams in D2? Yeah, I mean, there's obviously a lot of parts to it. So I appreciate you appreciate you uh, ha having me on today. Um, you know, those first couple of years, we had a lot of uh, returning guys um, that I kind of walked into as a coach. Uh, I think my first year here, we had four seniors and uh, six juniors. So it, uh, a group of guys who had won four games two years earlier, won 12 games a year before. Uh, they were looking for um, somebody that had some really good belief in them, but also a big time culture change. So um, it was a really um, I, I was really proud of those guys because it was, it was a balancing act. It was a lot harder than anything that they've ever done in the past, but they knew they wanted it. They knew they wanted something different. They wanted to be pushed. Um, we, we talk a lot about building confidence in our guys. So it was about building their confidence, trying to put them in the right positions to be successful um, and really trying to use those first two years to get the most out of this program that we could. We knew we'd have to do it from a recruiting standpoint, you know, long term, which we're kind of at now. Um, but in that moment, it was um, nine or 10 guys that had been here. We weren't going to have roster turnover. I don't really believe in just running guys off. Um, you know, I wanted to, to prove to these guys that, that, that they were good players and that we could do this with them. So uh, we had some awesome seniors, juniors. Um, my first year, Brandon Meyer turned into an All-American player. So it obviously helps when you have players like that. Um, but to their credit, they really bought into um, to trying to be successful. Uh, the thing I love about UMD and the reason I took the job or one of the reasons I took the job was um, every single sports team here is pretty darn successful. You start talking about national champions at hockey and women's hockey and football and volleyball has been to the national tournament 16, 20 years in a row, whatever it is, women's basketball, all that stuff. Um, you knew there was something special here. There's a reason why uh, so many programs are successful. Uh, our basketball program just needed a shot in the arm a little bit. So I give a ton of credit to what we're doing right now to those those guys that I coached those first two years. They really set the foundation uh, for what we're doing right now. Let's talk about this season specifically. Last season was a rough one, but it wasn't a normal one in any sense of normal. Finished six and seven, and we're projected to finish third in the North Division and sixth in the NSIC. Flash forward two months, and you are one of five remaining undefeated teams in D2 men's basketball. What has made this team so special to be undefeated thus far? Yeah, I think it's the culmination of last year and this year. Last year was hard for everybody, uh, whether you won or lost games or whatever you went through. Last year was tough from a basketball standpoint. I think we had three different 10, 10 plus day pauses during the season, right? So um, it happened to everybody at different points. Uh, for us, again, coming off a of year two, we had a ton of seniors. So it was kind of a reset year for us. We knew we had some really talented young guys in our program, but we started three true freshmen, uh, two sophomores last year. So uh, they were all going through college basketball for the first time. Uh, they didn't get a preseason. They didn't get a um, summer in the weight room. They literally, um, you know, our weight room wasn't open until December uh, of their freshman year. So you got all these guys that need all that stuff to be successful, um, just kind of got thrown out there to play. So to their credit, I thought we had a really good year um, last year. We played probably the two best teams in our league, Moorhead and Northern, who were two of the better teams in the country. So our guys got to see what that top level looks like. And then they were able to kind of go to work this offseason. So I give a ton of credit to them. They've all gotten better. They've all gotten stronger. We knew they were um, super talented guys coming out of high school. But as everybody knows, you got to keep on getting better uh, while you're in college. So I give a ton of credit to them. 
I knew we I knew we would have a good year this year, but um, I don't know if you ever expect to be 14 and 0. Uh, but our guys are super competitive. Uh, they're very talented. They're very unselfish. They play well together. Um, and I think you just see our guys just staying in the moment. They don't really, you know, it's so new for us. Uh, it's, it's new for these guys. There's nothing really to look ahead to. We're just kind of staying in the moment. We're in about our next game with COVID now. We had a game canceled last week. We'll have another one canceled this weekend. Um, so you just got to kind of stay in the moment, um, keep, you know, stay ready and just keep trying to have as much fun as possible. And these guys have done a great job of just competing and competing well together and just enjoying it um, on a day by day basis. But let's talk about that, that competitiveness, because I'd like to talk specifically about last game. Um, that was that was really a terrific ball game, just watching the basketball game. But it showed a lot about what makes D2 so special as well, how it all came together, right? You and Ferris State, yeah. two great teams, first of all, both lost the game. And it seemed like in five minutes, you're like, yeah, let's play each other, right? So yeah. tell us a little bit how, how you guys pulled that off so quickly. And then just the grit you saw in, in the, this team that you're talking about to pull out a double overtime thriller like that. Yeah, I think, you know, we were in a fortunate situation. Um, you know, we we're having a good year. I felt like um, it was a chance for us to go on the road and really test our team. You're not going to find many better teams than Ferris State, national champions a couple of years ago, really good team this year again. Um, you know, when you find out a game is canceled, um, you got two choices. You can either sit there and sulk or you can honestly go on social media and the internet and try to find somebody that's looking for a game, right? And that's what we decided uh, to do. I called Andy um, and within about, um, you know, five or six hours, he got approval from his administration. We got approval uh, from ours. It's an 11 hour bus trip. I think I, I text our guys Thursday night at about 10 o'clock. Hey, we got practice tomorrow morning, 10 a.m. And we're out um, at, 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 at one o'clock the next day. So um, it happened fast, but I think it was a good message to our team and even their team. Um, you know, either one of us could have won that game at multiple different times. Right. So whether you win or lose, uh, it was a great uh, message to our team that, hey, we're, we're all in. Uh, our administration and our uh, people that are really backing us are going to help us be successful. And let's go test ourselves. You know, why not? At the end of the day, um, it helps you for all the things down the road, strength of schedule and tournament and all that kind of stuff, if we're fortunate to be there. Um, so it was, it was a win-win situation all, all around. Was super proud of our guys. Um, it was an up and down game. Uh, it's the first, you know, we, we, we've had a lot of 15, 20 point wins this year. I knew it was going to be a different kind of game playing out there with the kind of team they are. So um, there were tons of back and forth, uh, big shots from both teams, bad turnovers, bad plays, good plays. Um, and our guys just stayed in the moment, um, continued to make big plays when we needed to. And by no means is the season over. We got a long ways to go, but it was a really good um, validation for our team that that we are one of the best teams in the country. Um, we've got to prove it every night when we play. We got to keep getting better like everybody does. But I think in that moment, it was really validating for our guys that um, for being the kind of new kid on the block, you know, we haven't been in the we're not the traditional top 10 team that we see all the time in D2. Uh, I think it was really validating for our guys in that moment, uh, but they've been great this week already getting back to work. We got much bigger goals than winning that game, obviously. So, um, but it was a really good validation point for our guys. And the Bulldogs have the top ranked offense in the NSIC, but also the top scoring margin in the conference. So the defense is there without revealing too much of your X's and O's. What strengths do you find yourself playing to? Do you consider yourself an offensive team, one that fuels itself on defense or just the right amount of balance? Yeah, hopefully the right balance. I think uh, I'm, a, I'm an offensive guy at heart. I've always been the offensive guy on different staffs that I've been on, and I kind of run the offense here. But um, one of the one of the biggest things we talked about from last year to this year, we were pretty good offensively last year, even even though we were about 500. But we were like 13th in our league in scoring defense. So that was something we really focused on with our team in the off season. Part of that is experience and strength, which they um, did a great job improving that. But also just that will and that desire that the understanding of we need to be good defensively for us to be successful. So seeing that pay off a little bit here in this first half of the season uh, has been great for our guys to see. Uh, but I'm an offensive guy at heart. I want to get up and down. I love to shoot threes, do all that stuff. So uh, it's probably 50 50. We've get, you know, to be as good as we want to be and to be one of the top teams in our league or in the country, you've got to be good at both. You've seen that with good teams across the country for the last, you know, for, you know, for basketball forever. So uh, we got to continue to be sharp on, on both ends. Uh, we're super um, versatile and unselfish offensively. So we've got five guys that average double figures in our starting lineup. We've got three or four guys off the bench who 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 are definitely capable of putting up 12 or 15 points a night. So for us, it's about being unselfish, working to get a great shot, not having to really force bad shots. And then I think our just our overall length and athleticism defensively has helped us be successful. 
Um, but I think the biggest thing is probably like we talked about earlier, just our competitiveness. Our guys um, are some of the best competitors I've coached in a long time. So yeah, they're still young. Maybe we're not supposed to be here yet, but these dudes play hard. Uh, they're not going to back down from anybody, and uh, they, they've done a great job of, of 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 helping that you know to be one of our better uh, qualities on, on the defensive end. And, and you mentioned that depth, and you know, as as a beat reporter that watches basketball, you love to see that depth, right? There's your starting five, there's, it's a nightmare for defenses, right? You can't double down on any one player because someone else is, is going to take you out. Um, is there, do you, I mean, talk about that depth a little bit, but is, is there a go-to guy on your team? Like if you have to run the picket fence, who's getting that, who's getting that last shot or is, is it really all five you have faith in hitting that game winner? Well, I definitely have faith in, in, in all five of our guys. We, I mean, everybody's got leading scorers and guys that maybe take more shots than others, but um, in all reality, it's been different guys, different games. Um, you know, it, Austin Andrews has been uh, one of the best post players in, um, in the country here through these first 14 games, almost averaging a double-double. I think he's been double-teamed one time because we have so many other good players around him. So the one game he got doubled, he had seven assists, right? So that's the kind of balance that we really preach um, in our in our program. We're not hunting stats. Guys aren't, hu aren't hunt hunting their shots. They're trying to make the next right play. So when you get doubled, you kick it, and other guys score. Other nights, he gets to go one-on-one, -on -one and he'll score 20 or 25 down there. Uh, we have different guys that do different things well. Um, Jack Middleton has turned into one of the better point guards in, uh, in the country. He had nine assists against Ferris State um, last week. He led the country in three-point percentage last year. He's shooting 45% again this year. So, And those are our guys that are maybe our fourth or fifth best scorer. So uh, we've got good options all the way around. Our starting five has been phenomenal. Um, but honestly, I feel like we've taken a next step when these bench guys have really started, you know, to produce a little bit. They're not averaging 10, 15 points, but when those guys can have a night here or there where they score 10, there's a different guy off the bench, Josh Strong, uh, Jacob Shields, Meister, Zach Leah. Those guys have all been able to kind of take their turns and get us a good 10, po you know, 10 points here, uh, 10 points there. And we can add that on to what our starters are doing. Um, it's been a good formula for our success so far. Basketball in the age of COVID, it has certainly taken on a different look to the game. What have been some of the biggest challenges for you and your team over the past two years? Well, I think last year was a little bit more challenging just because everything was so new um, and we didn't have vaccines. We didn't have the, some of the protections that we have now a little bit to help us be a little bit more protected to be able to play. But uh, on, on, the, on the flip end, I feel like we're kind of getting back to where we were last year at this point. You're seeing so many cancellations across the whole country. Um, you know, whether it's football, basketball, hockey, whatever it is, it's happening everywhere. So um, the challenge is just trying to keep your guys in that right mental space, um, getting them to understand it's, it's going to happen at some point, whether it's us or one of our opponents that happened to us last week, uh, just happened to us about, a, a, you know, 30 minutes before we're taping this podcast for, you know, for this weekend. So uh, for us, it's about staying in the, staying in the moment, focusing on what we can control, and just trying to keep our guys ready. And so far, so good for us. I think we, we've been able to navigate that pretty well. But there's no doubt college coaching or any coaching, uh, it's been a whole different challenge than anything I've been used to. Uh, you hear that from coaches all, all, all across the country. Uh, last year and this year is unlike anything we, 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 we've been through. We all know how to handle the X's and O's and um, scheduling and all that stuff. But there's so many other things now that we've had to um, try to become experts in and try to navigate uh, our, our players through. Um, so it's, it's, it's hard, but I think our guys have done a great job navigating it. We just kind of stay in the moment and try to be as positive as, as possible. And, and speaking of those challenges, your team can go 30 and 0, but the bottom line is that the road to the elite eight is likely going through Maryville, right? And, and Bethany and I, Bethany is a MIAA uh, alum. So she, you know, we talk about all the time that central region, right? Last year with Northern state and Northwest Missouri, um, it seems like the best basketball of the entire tournament, and this is no, you know, slight to any other program, but the best games from start to finish in the entire tournament is that central region tournament. Talk a little bit about what it's like to be a coach in that region. And then what makes Northwest kind of like that benchmark that it seems like everyone has to chase to get to the, to the finals. Yeah, no doubt. You know, in my, in, in my opinion, this region is, is, is the toughest. It's the toughest to even get into the tournament. Uh, in the first place, you know, two years ago, we had a fantastic year, 22 and eight. 
Um, I think we, you know, I think we would have been the eighth seed, but there are some upsets and some conference tournaments on that last Sunday, and all of a sudden we don't get in. And um, and we had some good, we had some great wins throughout that year. So um, any given year, there's 10, 12, 15 teams that are all pretty darn good teams in this region that that could play in the NCAA tournament. So number one, it's really hard to get in. Um, and once you're in there, you've seen the dominance of Northwest Mo, um, whatever, last five, six, seven years. Um, but when I was at when I was at Morehead as an assistant, we played them in the in the Elite Eight. Um, that was right right before they started winning every single one. But you could tell where their program was. Uh, Coach McCollum obviously has taken his program to a whole different level than anybody else here uh, in, in Division Two. So there's no doubt um, everything rolls uh, rolls through them, and you know pretty much on a yearly basis. But that's so to me that's so far down the road for us. We're trying to stay in the moment. Um, but they've obviously done a great job culture wise. They've got great players, great coaches, uh, great systems. Even last year when they were on the ropes at Northern State Regional Final, when you have that kind of culture, those dudes are they're, they're just never done. And that was a that was a credit to them for keep on fighting back. But we've got some great teams in our league. Northern State's been phenomenal the last four or five years. Moorhead was good for three or four years before that. So um, it's a battle to get into the region. And it's a battle to win your region. Once usually, once you get out of your region, um, I, I, I like the chances of, of of our teams because they've been so tested. Um, but that national tournament is so far down the road. We got 14 games left. Uh, hopefully, we're fortunate enough to be in it. Uh, but there's no doubt North, Northwest Mo is going to be uh, you know one of those top teams again, and you're going to have to beat them to get uh, you know to to keep on advancing uh, in, in the tournament. As a former D2 student athlete, I want to hear from you, Coach. What makes Division II so special to you? Yeah, I, I love it. You know, when I um, I played Division One in Iowa, um, I was a grad assistant and video coordinator. So that's all I kind of knew till I was about 25 or 26 years old. And I uh, got my first D2 assistant coaching job up at Northern State uh, for Paul Sather when he was there. Um, and I remember before I went there, I'm going to be here for a year or two. I'm going to get back D1. You know, what, that's what everybody thinks. But uh, once I got there, I think I realized just how good of level this basketball was. And now once you start getting older and having kids and having a family, it's a, you know, to me, it's a perfect, perfect balance of super high level competitive basketball. Uh, but you're still able to have that life balance. I get to coach my son's baseball team uh, in the summertime, coach my daughter's softball team. So um, there's a really good life balance, something, something that I really enjoy. Um, so it's been really good for myself and my family. This is, this is where I want to be. This is a level I love coaching at um, because it's super competitive. These guys um, and, and, and all athletes, um, no matter what sport, come here to play their sport, but they're also here to get an education. They're here to uh, be ready for life after basketball and also get a really good life balance from a personal level. So um, it's what I love. It's, uh, it's, it's been really fun for me for these last four years here at Duluth, but I've been in it now for you know, 10, 12 years at the Division II level. Um, great basketball, um, great student athletes, and it's something that I really enjoy. Okay, coach. You made it through the Q&A, but here comes the hard part of the show. This is the D2 Nation hot seat. I know Bethany reached out to you. I'm sure she didn't tell you. She usually doesn't tell people that the hot seat's coming, but this is the fun part of the show. All right. So, I like it. Let's go. All right, Bethany, let's get them started. Okay, we'll start easy. What is your favorite basketball team, college, or pro? Um, uh, outside of the Bulldogs, um, Iowa Hawkeyes for sure. It's where I played. That's where I grew up. We watch them. Um, both my parents and my wife's family lives there, big Hawkeye fan. So uh, I'll be a Hawkeye fan uh, until the day I die. Nice, nice. Okay, now it's getting a little harder. What's the best sports movie of all time? My favorite would probably be Major League. I'm a big baseball guy, the original Major League. I know some people like two or three better, but there's no beating uh, Major League One. Uh, to me, that's the best, one of the best sports movies for sure. It's so quotable, right? That's the best part of it. You could just use those quotes in any situation that you're in. I love that. Part. I know. I know. I'm starting to get old when I use those quotes in practice, and my guys have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> right. 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 I know Wayne likes that answer. Being a big baseball guy. Yep. Yep. What is your most binge-worthy television show? Oh wow! Uh, I got on Ozarks pretty good. We're, I'm waiting for the next season here to drop here sometime soon. Um, so that's probably the last one I've, I've binged a lot. I don't watch a lot of TV, quite honestly, other than live sports. That's pretty much what I'm watching. But uh, last one I got into big was Ozarks, um, I think first three seasons. And now we're wait, waiting for the last one. I just binged Cobra Kai. You mentioned that you're a little older and the Karate Kid reference. It's such a terrible show, but it's so addictive that you just binge the whole thing. It, yeah. it's, it's rough. It's rough. Schitt's Creek, was actually, Schitt's Creek was actually the last one I watched. Now that I think about it, that was hilarious. And one of my that favorites. is a good one. That is definitely a good one. Um, 
What coach or coaches have you taken inspiration from throughout your career? Yeah, that's a great question. There's a lot of them. Uh, so I don't want to leave anybody out, but um, I even go back to my playing days. Um, high school coach, Steve Bergman, he's been there forever. Um, one of the best coaches in Iowa down there. Uh, Doug Wagonmaster was a coach at Kirkwood Community College forever, super successful. Uh, Steve Alford, I played for at Iowa. Um, and then, you know, really working for Paul Say there at Northern, uh, Chad Walthall at, 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 at Moorhead, which is I've been in the Division II game. Those two guys have been two of the most successful coaches in the Northern Sun and in this region uh, for a long time. So you kind of just take um, different pieces from everybody you've worked with, try to mold it into your own style and your own, um, you know, your own way to do things. But Paul and Chad, both those guys that have been phenomenal as far as um, leaning on those guys, even once I get here, you know, you're going against them when Paul was still here um, at Northern and Chad's at Morehead, you play against them twice a year. Those are some super intense games. Um, but, you know, day before the game, day after the game, we're still talking uh, some great resources and great mentors um, and, and, and still really good friends. If you weren't a basketball coach, what would you be doing? Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> I actually don't know. I uh, changed my major about four times in college. Uh, I was going to be a pharmacist. Uh, chemistry two didn't quite go the way I wanted it to go when I was a sophomore in college, so I had to, had to change there. Um, I, I guess I'm a business major, finance, so maybe something in banking, investment banking, uh, stock market. That sounds fun, but I'm not quite sure what I would do. Um, this is definitely what I want to do, hopefully, for the rest of my life. That's awesome. That's uh, that's usually the toughest question that we ask when it comes to, to the coaches. Most coaches think, can't do much else. I'll, I'll, I'll be honest. We're pretty, I, we're pretty locked in. I think the most common answer is fish all day. I, I think a couple coaches have given a fish I, or golf. I, I could play golf. I don't fish. I could play golf. There you, go. they, there you go. They can't fish up there. The water's always frozen. Right, right. Uh, no, people love ice fishing. They sit in these little huts and they put on the space heater. It's not for me, but people love it. So more oh. power to them. Not for me either, but uh, coach, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, obviously, you know, we're hoping it's a clear path for you guys. You stay healthy, you stay safe and, and really good luck the rest of this week and, and, and the rest of the year. And hopefully we catch up with you in, in March again. So thank you again for taking yeah, a few thanks minutes. Thanks for having me. Uh, this is awesome. I know, uh, you know, your weekly power rankings. Um, my wife follows them. She, you know, she, one of the reasons we probably played Ferris is because I think you wrote in there, we hadn't had a tough, tough enough schedule. So she said, hey, let's go play somebody, right? So I give you just as much credit uh, for playing that game as anybody else, Wayne. So there you go. Thank you. And, and just for the record, that's just based on stats. I'm not, okay. I'm not making any opinion. Hey, that was just Wayne, bring statistically it speaking. Bring it in. I like it. I like it. <laughs> All right. Remember, D2 Nation, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, YouTube, and just about anywhere else you want to listen to a podcast. Give us a follow, and we'll see you next week on the D2 Nation.